Hello everyone and welcome back to our continued blind let's play Ace Attorney Dual Destinies for PlayStation 5. My name is the Flightless Bird. This is your story based game channel and today, well today we're trying to get to the bottom of this case. It may look like the Marlin is our guy. I was about to say fish. He's not a fish. His name sounds like a fish. But yeah, uh, I, and I'm believing that this is all a revenge plot. Because Marlin was in love with the former trainer who died a year ago. And for the entire year, he has plotted a way to get back at the aquarium. And now he has struck. That's what my current theory is. Makes a lot of sense to me. But is it the truth? Only one way to find out. Let's do it. I hope you're all having a wonderful, fantastic day today. As I thought, the only person who could have killed the victim is Sasha Buckler. The fact still remains whether the witness was the one who tried to kill the orca or not. Senator! Mr. Rhymes was right about one thing. His testimony was advantageous to our case. But pointing out the contradiction in his statement will only drive us into a corner. When this prosecutor Black will see it, suspicion against Miss Buckler is now deepened. Uh oh. If I don't do something fast, the judge is going to find Sasha guilty. But Mr. Wright, isn't there anything that we can do? There has to be a way to prove Sasha is innocent. At a time like this, the thing to do is turn my thinking around. Instead of trying to prove that Sasha couldn't have done it, I have to think about what made it possible for someone else to have done it. As long as the crime scene is the Orca pool room, then Sasha is the only one who could have committed the crime. You know what I just realized too? We have this unexplainable piece of evidence. This. The fact that he reached down into the pool with it. I have no idea what this means. Or why this is a piece of evidence. There's just... There's just still stuff I don't know. No need for pity or baldness. Just finish him off with the swift verdict. But it appears the fence has no objections. Very well, I will give my verdict. Hold it, hold it, yeah! Your honor, please hold off on that verdict. But you are so quiet, Mr. Wright. He has something to say now? Well, I'll say anything as long as I don't give a guilty verdict. The defense has a counter-argument. Hey, you do? Hmm, pitiful, such desperation. You look pale. Are you sure you're prepared to make this counter-argument? The worst of times are when lawyers had to force the biggest smi smiles. I'll never forget those words, no matter how many years go by. Even though it's probably just a bluff, I'll give it to them with a smile. What if the scene of the crime was somewhere else? Uh, the scene of the crime? Ah, somewhere else? What? You're finding fault with the police investigation now? Well, as I understand it, the prosecution's argument is as follows. The scene of the crime was the Orca pool room. Only the defendant and victim entered that room when there was no water in the pool. Therefore, only the defendant could have committed the crime. Hmm, that is correct. But if the scene of the crime was not the Orca pool room, then somebody other than the defendant could have committed the crime. 
Uh, are you sure you know what you're going with this? I might not be too sure, but I can't back down now. Mr. Wright, I hope that I'm wrong. But this isn't one of your bluffs by any chance. Ha ha ha, of course not. The church jumps me far too well. And do you have a theory on where the actual scene of the crime was? Yes, of course. Think, Phoenix, think. Think of a place other than the Orca Pool Room where one could fall to one's death. Well, then allow me to share a theory with the court. Where was the real scene of the murder? Uh, the show pool. Absolutely. Yeah. Take that. The show stage pool might have been drained of water at some point as well. And if so, it would be just as possible to fall to one set there as the orca pool. Hmm. Right, you know. What you're doing is a disgrace to your profession. I sincerely hope you have some basis for what you're suggesting. Uh, of course I do. But well, I will as soon as I think of something. The victim's body was found in the orca pool. How do you explain that? Objection! Well, how about if, after the victim was killed in the show stage pool, his body was moved to the orca pool? The hell, but if? What kind of presentation argument is that? You had better have a reasonable explanation to how the body was moved. There's no turning back now. I had to think of a way the body could have been moved. Was there something at the scene that could have been used to move the body? Absolutely, the crane. Because the crane connects to the uh, the other pool, right? Take that. The hoist runs between the orca room and the show stage. The stretcher can be hung from the hoist to move things like Ola or the skull rock. The stretcher could have also used been used to move the dead body. Mmm, yes, the stretcher can move the orca or the skull rock. Seems likely it could also move a dead body as well. Wow, somehow that worked. I might just be able to pull this off. If the show pool was the scene of the crime, someone else could have done it. Objection! Hmm. You desperately spew conjecture, and now you even make up a crime scene? Arga! He's free! Eek! Not again! You don't have the soul of a warrior. You don't have to deserve to be on the battlefield. But since and even your fabrication is half-baked, it's a disgrace! What do you mean, half-baked? Please don't kill me. The hoys can be operated from the orca pool room only. And the only person who entered the Orca pool room was the defendant. So even if the body was moved, the only one who could have moved it was the defendant herself. Yeah! Order! So it comes back to the defendant no matter which pool it was. Meaning I can't clear Sasha either way? Sasha said she moved Ola in this gold rock. And I believe her. So could it be possible that she moved the body herself without being aware of it? Mr. Wright, do you have an objection to prosecutor Black Girl's claim? Do I have an objection to claim the defendant moved the body? You bet I have one! I mean, I don't have anything else to say at this point. The defense has an objection. Hmm. Alright, fine. Let's hear this objection then. Uh, well, my objection is I can't admit I haven't thought of one. Mr. Wright, you just felt like seeing hand in Jackson, didn't you? Well, yes. Yes, you are. <laughs> I like that. Well, I just feel like giving you a penalty. No! Oh, that was such a trap, by the way. 
The game makes you feel like you have nothing else to say, and they're just like, oh, well, just because you had to say something. Boom, penalty. <laughs> the hoist could only be operated from the Orca Pole Room. Furthermore, the defendant is the only one who entered the Orca Pole Room. Therefore, the defendant is the only one who can move the party. There are no inconsistencies in Brusque the Black Girl's claim itself. But the only thing Sasha moved are Ola and the Skull Rock. So that must mean Sasha moved the body without realizing it. So what, the body was in the rock? I admit, I don't see any problems with Prosecutor Buckler's claim, per se. Miss Buckler must have been the one who moved the body. Oh, what? Mr. Wright, so you mean the defendant committed the murder? No. I am simply conceding that she was the only one who could have moved the body. However, I contend Miss Buckler was not aware that that is what she was doing. The culprit made her move it, unbeknownst to her. The defendant moved a dead body without recognizing it was a dead body? How could that be possible? The body was found in the orca pool and must have been moved there somehow. I might find some kind of hint in the things she moved with this stretcher. The culprit made Miss Buckler move the body along with this piece of evidence. Uh, it's gotta be the school rock, right? Take that! The school rock? It's the only thing he could have chosen. Miss Buckler told me yesterday that she moved the school rock when she was cleaning. The only two things Miss Buckler moved to the orca pool are Ola and the skull rock. Is that why maybe the whale was bashing its head on the, the, the skull rock? Because somehow he was in the rock? I would like to suggest that the victim's body may have been inside the skull rock. What? Hmm. Inside, hidden inside the rock, the body could have been moved to the orca pole with the hoist. At the show stage, Marlon Rhymes loaded up the skull rock with the body inside. And then he used the walkie-talkie to let Miss Buckler know the rock was loaded. Miss, Uc Miss Buckler operated the hoist on the orca pole room and moved the stretcher. She moved the rock without knowing the body was inside. You really think there's no space inside the skull rock to place a body? The swashbuckler fire indicates it could be possible. Yeah, I, I was just thinking that too. Like, I know the skull rock is present. I don't have the flyer anymore, though. There it is. Uh, Captain Ola has new rival featuring the dash of a satch with a fluttering red scarf. Who will obtain the gold coins hidden inside the cold skull rock. And we know the coins had blood on them, too, right? Please focus on the question at the bottom left. Oh, it says, who will obtain the gold coins hidden inside the hidden in the skull of rock? Hmm, in that case, I suppose the rock is most likely hollow. What's more, if the body was inside the skull of rock, it explains the remaining unanswered questions. Such as, please take a look at the security footage of the scene Mr. Bloom witnessed. Where did the body that Mr. Plume saw come from? Please recall, what was Ola doing to the skull rock at the time? She was headbutting it. Ooh! That's right. Ola's ramming released the body from the skull rock. The body had been placed inside the skull rock and moved there from the show stage. I assert that the real murder scene was, in fact, the show stage pool. Silence. What rubbish is this now? You don't have a single scrap of evidence. Objection! It's easy enough to verify what I say. Take a look inside the skull rock for yourself. You should find some kind of proof that the body was there. Blood, fibers, hair. Yeah, I don't know. Mr. Wright, that, that was incredible. 
You turn things completely around. And to think, it all started with that half-baked bluff, too. Woo, that was a close one. Did you really have to add that last bit, though? <laughs> the murder took place the show stage, and who is the perpetrator? It is, naturally, the person who was at the show stage. I don't like where this is going, all the dots. Mr. Rhymes, what's you the one who loaded the skull rock onto the stretcher at the show stage? <laughs> well, Mr. Rat, that was some pretty smart brain work you did there. Be honest, I never thought you could figure it out. I tried to protect myself, but I guess it came back to bite me. Are you confessing you false testimony before Mr. Rhymes? Well, that's perjury. Well, yeah. What Mr. Rhymes says is true. The body was inside the school of Ark. And it's true the cat was killed in the show pool, too. What? He's admitted that easily? This is weird. Well, this time I'm going to tell you the whole truth and nothing but the truth and all that other stuff which isn't the really the truth, but I'm going to say it so quickly and so darn smartly that every single truth I say will definitely not be the truth, but you'll think it's the truth because I'm going to tell you the truth about what happened that day. Yeah! What is this one? The whole truth. Mm hmm You know, in the shell pool, New York shot the captain up into the air. But then the captain came down and slammed in the water. I can still remember the spectator's screams clearly. All Sasha did was move the body. She was trying to protect the orca. Mr. Plume witnessed the orca finding the body. Well, I freaked the heck out. Hmm. So now we're back to the orca again, I see. If you were going to give testimony like that, why did I bother putting you on the stand? I'm doing is telling the truth. Well, that day, Sasha wanted to do the old version of the Swashuckler Spectacular. So she suggested she hide the body in the Skull Rock and move into the Orca Pool. Well, I was going to figure out what to do with the body after the show was over. The Orca is the one that killed the captain. Was it me? And was it Sasha? So it was Mr. Rhymes' idea to hide the body in the Skull Rock. But if Mr. Rhymes is the culprit, why would he protect Sasha? False charges against Sasha would mean he himself would escape suspicion, so why? Mr. Wright, how about you leave this to me? Athena, do you mean you heard something? Yep, I heard noise. Discord in Mr. Rhymes' hut. So that means somewhere in his testimony there's an inconsistency in his emotions. Alright, Athena. Give him a good counseling session. So weird to say. You got it, boss. Huh? Oh, what's this? What are you getting, Athena? Hmm, uh, this testimony is pretty complex. Feelings of deep sadness and intense anger are all being called up. Those two emotions appear to be running out of control. Out of control emotions? Is that going to be a problem? We'll have to pull the cause if we want to get to his two emotions and testimony. There might even be odd or unusual natural spots his testimony he isn't aware of. Alright, let's probe for the cause of his out of control emotions then. I'll explain how to probe. Let's find the root cause together. When you see something off of this statement, press probe. Yeah, yeah, we, we know this, we know this. <clears throat> now, whether or not I can actually do it or not is another question. It's kind of weird that they're saying this here, but I guess this is DLC. Like I said, whether or not I can actually do this is a different question, but I know how it works. And I know it's not just sadness, it's also fear, right? In the show pool, the orca shot the captain up into the air. Then the captain came down and slammed into the water. I can still remember the spectator screams, clearly. All Sasha did was move the body, she was trying to protect the orca. What Mr. the plume witnessed the orca find the body, I freaked. 
What could be the cause of his out of control sadness and anger? It'd be hard to find them both at the same time. Let's cut to probably just one. He did make one odd statement I was wondering about. I highly doubt there were any spectators at the scene of the crime. Yes, I agree. Or else everyone would have said that. Hey, good point. That does some fit. It might just be the cause of his out of control emotions. Let's try pointing to the spectators. Just to be sure. Ugh. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. That there should not have been spectators there. Or else everyone would have been freaking. So... Wait. Hold on, this, this, this... Okay, this is a little bit different. I'm not just pointing at these. I'm pointing at... Um, things in the picture. Well, we know it's gotta be spectators, so even though I may not have known it because it did something different, I, it's it's easy to figure out. I mean, that's easier to figure out than probing for the emotions, I think. I doubt there were any spectators there at the show stage when the owner died. If there had been, those witnesses would have told us the true crime scene right away. Exactly. What? Oh, right. Of course. I just made a mistake. Okay, that made the sadness subside. So maybe the spectators part was what made him sad. I wonder why I would make that mistake saying spectators were there. How strange. The only thing I could think of is that he was mixing up one memory with another. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. He was thinking of his uh, previous uh, love. Like, he was in a similar situation before and it was deeply imprinted on his heart. A situation where one orca killed somebody and there were spectators there. Hey, I think I know why he's mixing up his memories. The reason why Mr. Rhymes has mixed up his memories is, uh, the girl. Let's have... That. Take that. Mr. Rhymes, I think I know what happened. Could you have been mixing up what happened a year ago with this incident? Maybe that's why you slipped and said the owner was killed in front of spectators. What? Why did you? You're right. I did see the orca kill somebody a year ago. But what about it? I was just one of the spectators. Really? Just another spectator? There must be a reason why you feel good sadness about the incident last year. Silence. Oh, you're still here. <laughs> Stop. There's that sensical scrutiny of feelings. Just present your evidence to prove your point. Eep. But boss, do we have any kind of evidence that would back us up here? Hmm, there is one piece that comes to mind that might explain his sadness. Well, I'm waiting. Let's see this evidence has to do with Marlon Rhymes' sadness. It's... this? Take that! Azura Summers died an accidental death one year ago. This is her boyfriend's charm. Hey, hey! What are you doing with that charm? It was found in Rifle's stomach yesterday. Judging by your reaction, I believe this charm belongs to you. I guess, I guess I need to push him just a little harder to make him admit it. When Mr. Vibes said there were charm, he was very rattled. We'd better examine this charm a little more. Good idea. Let's look inside it. Hmm? What's this? A photograph? What, we never realized there was a photograph in there? Really? That would have made the case a whole lot simpler. Like, seriously, I'm kind of offended by this piece of evidence. She is very beautiful. God. I love her hair. Her hair looks so cool with the water behind her. And they look so happy. And Ola looks so happy. I mean, everyone looks so happy. It's... Yeah, he had his entire life changed in one moment. Azora Summers and Marlon Rhymes? 
Mr. Rhymes, you and Azura Summers were a couple, weren't you? Eh. So what if we were a couple? Doesn't have anything to do with the captain's case. You believe you saw the orca kill your girlfriend. That's the cause of your sadness. Isn't that emotion of yours connected to the current case? Silence. The only thing you revealed was the witness's connection to the victim of last year's incident. What does the witness's past have to do with the case at hand? I don't know yet. But we managed to pinpoint the source of his sadness. Now let's delve into whom Mr. Vimes is angry at. The captain. I think it's that exact scene except the captain. I still remember the captain said body clearly. So what's the cause of Mr. Rhyme's intense anger? Well, I don't think it was directed at that. Let's think about who is really angered and why. Really? He's not mad as Sasha or else. He's mad at the whale. Mr. Rhymes, you're angry with Orla, aren't you? Angry? An orca? Why would I be? If you think I have some reason to be mad, well then show me some proof. Do I have proof that Mr. Rhymes has a reason to be mad? I got your proof. I bet the evidence we just took a look at would come in handy here. This charm indicates that you are Azora's summer's boyfriend. I'm sure you believe Orla killed your girlfriend a year ago. Exactly. You lost your girlfriend, and so you've been angry at Orla. Eh, Alright. You gotta meet it. I'll never forget that stupid whale orca. Zoo is dead, and that orca is still swimming around happy as a clam. I became an animal keeper just so I could prove that orca is a killer. You're right. I want that orca to pay. There. Do you feel good dragging up a person's past? But still don't change anything. Ack, he's right. I disagree. It does change things. His other control emotion to write it down. Now we should be able to find out the truth behind that emotion. Okay, what's been updated? Okay, nothing's been updated. But well, we do have two other emotions. We also have... <laughs> so the question is, which one... Okay, he hates the whale. And he's sad about the captain. He's really sad about the captain dying. He's really angry at the whale. He's not too angry here. Wonder, yeah, I gotta do the color thing. I freaked. You would be fearful of this. Probably so angry at the whale. When we view emotions alongside your testimony, we find the unexpected. Okay, that was not it. It's one of those things where I'm not good at this game. And when I say this game, I mean this, this, uh, 
this um what's we call the uh the, the but you know what I mean whatever that thing is called the emotion thing. Wait a minute, there really isn't anything strange here at all. I don't know, but I think we made a mistake, Mr. Wright. Okay, what's the mistake? I think maybe you're right. Let's take another look. Yeah, let's take another look. There must be an unexpected motion right here somewhere. What is it? What is the unexpected motion? Um, okay, let's look. Let's look at the outside. So, there is nothing... There, there's nothing, um... Let's ignore the other two. Maybe I missed something, like, really obvious. Okay, so anger, sadness. Anger, sadness. Anger, sadness. Anger, sadness. Anger, sadness. In the show pool, the orca shot the captain up into the air. He's angry and he's sad. Then the captain came down and slammed in the water. He's very angry. And very sad. I can still remember the captain's dead body clearly. Anger and sad. She was trying to protect the orca. Anger and sad. When Mr. Poom witnessed the orca find the body, I freaked. Anger and sad. So which of these two... Wait. He said he freaked, which means shouldn't like surprise be lit up here? Because if he freaked out, he want to be anger. He want to be angry. He want to be angry or sad. He would be uh, shocked or surprised. Uh, this little guy down here, the, uh, the yellow thing down here. This is not probing, but he definitely was freaked out about it. But we haven't had a case yet where... You know what? I, I don't seem to get any penalty. It's worth a shot. Go for it. Go for it. Uh, X, not trying to... That, that was it! Excellent! Oh, you tricky little devil. I did say that in, like, the previous case. That there was no... There wasn't uh, something like probing. So the lack of it probing meant something. And I was wrong? So I'm glad I was just, what, like, a case ahead? <laughs> yeah, I was just a case ahead, that's all. Uh, when Mr. Plume witnessed the orca find the body, you freaked, really. I'm so glad that was the answer because that is one thing that I could probably be stuck on for a while. And it's probably going to be the thing that I get stuck on the most in this game. So that's a big breath of relief, you know. Uh, just a big breath of relief, or sigh of relief, or... I don't even know the right word. You know, it, it just feels good, all right? How's that? <laughs> when Mr. Plume witnessed the orca find the body, you freaked. Really? Eh, what are you getting at? With Mr. Plume as a witness, Orla was guaranteed to be accused of the murder. Didn't it work out exactly as you'd hoped? In order to have Ola put down, you made sure Mr. Plume witnessed that scene. That is a creepy look at Marlin. He looks so guilty in that picture. Bye bye! <laughs> I like Widget. So you figured it all out, did you? But Mr. Rams, are you admitting it? I didn't really want to have to find anybody, but you know the orca. But you leave me no choice. 
What the heck is he doing? I, um, I, 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 um. Alrighty then! Well, we're going, like, pure One Piece in this episode, that's for sure. You just did a, you just did a, uh, Super Saiyan power-up, and then he grew, like, massive muscles, and now he's got a giant marlin on the back. Ow! Alright! <laughs> I mean, this was, uh... Uh, this was very <laughs> unexpected, and I love it. I'm all, I'm all, I'm 100% in on this. This is great. I love this. I mean, look at the giant rhymes. Uh, this, this is just great. The pirate hat and everything. Look at the pirate hat. Pirate hat has a hat on. The skull has a hat and a bandana reflecting his bandana. That is just, I mean, everything about this picture is amazing. Now it's time to get serious. Yo, ho, what, what? Yo, 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 ho! Haunt me, me, brothers, present. Vast grass eaters, stay free. Take me words to pop in your mouth, scurry grass eaters, damn me to my beat. Yo, 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 ho, boy, I'm ready for the show down! Uh, what is going on? <laughs> oh, that's my. <laughs> I, I normally say I like it when the protagonists are on the same page, but in this case, I like it when the judge and I are on the same page. <laughs> Where did this pirate fellow come from? He, he looks completely like a completely different person. Yeah, he does. Order. If we don't have order, boss good black crew will yield at us. <laughs> He's like, what the heck is going on? <laughs> Even prosecuted black girl is at a loss for words. So I plan to have that winch be witness? Ha <laughs> you caught me out. It'd be true that I thought that orca's murderous ways should be found out. I'll have to be wise to to have to see the body. So you admit it, you deliberately framed Orla. Yeah, Arr, it be true. But what skin be that off of anybody's nose? Well, that orc could be a murdering scurvy dog. I may have a grudge against that orca, but I always felt grateful toward the captain. That killer orca. Why, she murdered us or in the captain. So, of course, she should rock the plank. Arr. God, I don't have a response to that. I agree. It wouldn't make any sense for to kill the owner. Why would he? But his hatred for Ola, on the other hand, comes through that and clear. Huh. Wait a minute. A killing Mr. Shipley doesn't make sense. Who would it make sense for Rhymes to kill? Maybe. My theory has been all wrong. Your Honor. I think I just became aware of a new fact. Oh, and uh, what is that? Now that we know about Mr. Rhymes' intense hatred of Orla, it turns the premise we've been arguing under on its ear. Been arguing under on it. Yeah, that. I will now reveal the identity of the individual Mr. Rhymes meant to kill from the start. The, the whale itself? Take that! What? So witness intent was to kill the orca? Exactly. The witness's intended victim was not Jack Shipley. From the start, it was all a scheme to kill Orla. The orca was his true target, but Jack Shipley is the one who died. The orca is alive and quite well. <sighs> hmm, he's right. He wanted to kill the orca, and yet it was Jack Shipley who fell to his death. How did that happen? Wait a minute. What 
if... What if Mr. Rhymes wanted to kill Orla, but somehow connected to Mr. Shipley's death? Heh, <laughs> at a loss for words, are you? What happened to Bravado a moment ago? Enough of this reckless words without any basis, in fact. Objection! They aren't reckless words. The basis for my claim is at the real murder scene, the show pool. What are you talking about? It is my contention that two incidents happened at the show pool. The attempted murder of the orca and the victim falling to his death. First of all, in order to kill the orca, Mr. Vimes removed something from the scene. And by doing so, he made it possible for Mr. Shipley to fall to his death. You did what now? Mr. Wright, what did Mr. Vines remove and intend to kill Orca? Or Orla? Uh, the, the, the water? I mean, it seems kind of evident that it's the only thing that he could remove in this picture. Take that! Don't tell me you're trying to claim you tried to kill the Orca by draining the pool of water. Well, that's exactly what I'm claiming. To help the defendant with the cleaning, Marlon Rhymes took charge of Orla. With a plan to kill Orla in the show pool. And because the pool water was drained. It made it possible for Jack Shipley to fall to his death in the show pool. So wait, his death was accidental? Oh my god. Uh, 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 <laughs> I, I, I like said, I'm all in on this. This is great. Arr, I tried to kill the orca, you see? Can you prove there was nearly a drop of water in the poo? Well, that day I was sitting looking after the orca. Why would I have the monster started killing it? Objection! You claim you were looking after Ola in the early morning hours of July 20th. But I don't think you were doing a very good job of it. After all, Ola wasn't given anything to eat during that time. How would you know such a thing? The torpedo, yeah. I know because of Ola's recorded here in the torpedo data system. This system continuously records data on the subject it monitors. From Ola's record, we can tell exactly what she ate or didn't eat. Ah, seeing me! Nobody had told me about that confound dazzling contraption! Only a few of the ship shape aquarium staff know about this system. According to Ola's record, she never ate in those early morning hours of the 20th. You planned to kill Ola, and that's why you didn't feed her. Silence! Huh, you're wasting time. What proof do you have of that? Perhaps the orca simply wasn't hungry. Ack, he's right. I don't have any proof. If Ola simply didn't eat, then that would create an inconsistency. Where did the fish go? Her fish? Good question. Where did it disappear to? Fish? What does it matter? What relevance does it have to the case? Cease this stalling with inconsequential questions. Stop delving into the depths of the orca's stomach and delve into the case itself. Objection! But wait, it may seem like a small inconsistency. But it's an issue of great importance, I think. Uh, what are you doing at, Mr. Wright? How could the fish disappear? Somebody must have eaten it. So who came to the show stage and ate all his fish? I think I might have a pretty good idea. I believe there must have been a visitor to the show stage that Mr. Rhymes didn't notice. Huh? Visitor? Are you trying to introduce yet another suspect at this 11th hour? If you utter more of your careless remarks, Taka won't look favorably upon it. I don't plan to utter any careless remarks. Whether my remarks will actually be related to the case or not, I don't yet know. 
Don't worry, boss. If Taka comes this way, I'll fend him off. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. You'll be the first one on the desk with me. But do try to keep your marks careful. <laughs> Somehow, all his fish disappeared. Somebody must have visited show stage, but who? This was a visitor show stage. Uh, it's rifle? Yeah, I mean... That makes sense to me. Who else would be eating fish? I mean, Sasha Buckler's not gonna go over there and just eat raw fish. Hermit Crab's not gonna do it. Although, maybe Sniper did it, but that's not one of my choices. Uh, there's only one... Person? Question mark? There's only one being who could have ate the fish, and that's the, uh, flightless bird. I would choose the other stuff, but we got a health meter. I believe Rifle the Penguin visited this show stage. Uh, first in order now a penguin? Ah, why you be seeing such things, Mr. Liar? I didn't see Rifle during the wee early morning hours. You have any proof that Rifle is in the show stage? Is it in the torpedo? Rifle ate around 4 a.m. Yeah. If you be a lawyer of any salt, show me the evidence. The bottom of Rifle's feet were pink for some reason. That fact is a clue that Rifle was indeed at the show stage. I have to present that piece of evidence that connects Rifle to the show stage. Now to prove I'm a lawyer with my salt. Let's prove that Rifle is at the show stage. Okay, so it's not asking me about how do I prove to eat. I... I need to find a pink item. Oh, you dirty. You dirty. You dirty bastards. I... I hate you so much. Because this is so obvious. And yet, I didn't recognize it. Okay, so here's the thing. There are stars all over this picture. But in the top left, those aren't stars. Those are penguin feet. But they look like stars. So I never even recognized that those look different from the others. Ah. Really good way to hide that. Take that. Oh my, what a cute little sign. Look at all those adorable stars. These stars are actually starfish. Miss Buckler painted the sign. In the early morning hours of the 20th, she left the sign at the show stage to dry. Mr. Rhymes kept an eye on the sign for Miss Buckler while the paint was drying. Aye, that'd be true. But what's your point? Well, on the sign, it's proof that Rifle visited the show stage. Uh, proof of the penguin's visit? I'm afraid I don't see it. Where is this proof that the penguin visits show stage? Please point out. Okay, I caught it before he asked me to, but I caught it. A couple of pink starfish are shaped a little different than the others. Ah, oh, you're right. They look almost like little leaves. Rifle had pink paint on the bottom of our feet. These little leaf-like shapes on the sign are actually Rifle's footprints. Rifle made these footprints by walking on the sign before it was dry. Oh, what cute little pink penguin prints! <laughs> so, there are footprints. What of them? Well, Marlon Rhymes was watching over the sign at the show stage while the paint dried. And during that time, the penguin paid a visit. According to the torpedo data system, we know that Rifle ate something that morning of the 20th. Most likely, Rifle ate the fish meant for Orla that was at the show stage. Orla's snack was a small quantity of fish. Even a penguin could have eaten, could have eaten it all. Again! Rifle ate Orla's fish? Who be a say that Rifle ate Orla's fish? I mean, she could have picked up the food anywheres. But that doesn't change the fact that it really was at the show stage. After all, I had to help move the skull of rock. Couldn't have been moved without me. The witness claims that he never saw the penguin. How do you explain this contradiction? Both Mr. Rhymes and Rifle were at the show stage, but Mr. Rhymes didn't see her. So where could Mr. Rhymes have been at the time? Right to know. If you aren't up to the task, I could just put this witness's testimony for you. If I leave it to Prosecutor Blackwell, Sasha will be declared guilty. I can't let him interrupt this line of reasoning. 
Mr. Wright, let's try to figure out how things looked when Rifle came to the show stage. Mr. Rhymes is at the show stage, keeping an eye on Orla and the sign. And we know it must be true because he helped move the skull rock. Oh, look at the penguin! And then Rifle came in and walked over the sign. Oh, but what did Mr. Rhymes know this rifle if he was right there? Well, let's think about where Mr. Rhymes could have been. Is there a place in the show stage area where Rifle couldn't have been seen? Is there a place where rifle couldn't have been seen? Would be here, right? But there was no water. There's no water. You could have been down here swimming. Um. Um. Go with it? I mean, I don't have any other ideas. Take that. What? Inside the pool? But you're right. If he was inside the pool, he wouldn't have noticed the rifle. Okay, well, that was the answer. So you say Mr. Vines was underwater the whole time rifle was eating? No, not underwater. But I think about what he was trying to do. The answer is clear. Okay, so it's not that rifle was in the pool. Rhymes was down the pool. I think that's what it's saying. I don't know. That was kind of confusing. Now I'm finally starting to get the whole picture. Huh. Just like yesterday. Must you two always be whispering to each other? Why? Don't you admit that resorting to a penguin will get you nowhere. Hey. Objection. Well, birds are the best. Oh, I don't know about that. The fact that Mr. Rhymes didn't know his rifle is such a small inconsistency. But it's a key point that proves what Mr. Rhymes was trying to do. The penguin is a key point. Absolutely. Penguin is going to save the day. The show stage pool is very deep. If Rifle came to visit while Mr. Rhymes was at the bottom of the pool, he would have never noticed Rifle. Ah! Orcas can be out of the water for a short time without sustaining damage. But if they're out of the water for a long time, then we can eventually die. In order to kill Orla, Mr. Rhymes had to drain the pool. And while the pool was drained of water, Mr. Shipley fell to his death. The show stage pool is about 65 feet deep, just like the orca pool. Without water in the pool, a person could be made to fall 65 feet. Huh? Mr. Rhymes probably wondered what to do. If he continued with his plan to kill Orla, how would he dispose of Mr. Shipley's body? So he devised a plan to kill two birds with one stone. You know, figuratively speaking. What? How? Mr. Rhymes went down to the bottom of the pool and put the victim's body in the rock. He then had Miss Buckler move the rock and the body together. Silence. And the witness made the defendant do this somehow without arousing our suspicion. Oh, that's right. Mr. Shibley told Miss Buckler that she could have performed in the new show. Miss Buckler became upset and wanted to switch back to the old version of the show. So Mr. Rhymes conveniently suggested that she take and hide a pop for the new show. Mr. Rhymes then manipulated Ola using her singing and lifesaver tricks. He schemed. To have Ola find the body while Mr. Plume would be standing witness. Yep. He saddled Ola with a false charge of murder so that the Orla would be put down. What? Arr! Arr! So the fact that witness didn't see the penguin. Shows that when Rifle visited the show stage, Rhymes was putting the body in the rock. At the bottom of the pool, that is. Now who would have thought the president of a penguin could move the witness's actions? Hey, never underestimate the plotless birds! It's working. Just a little further now, and Sasha will be proven not guilty. Silence. Come on, dude. We already got this. We're at the end of this case. 
Slut, and you know you lost. If you think you've won this battle, you are sorely mistaken. Your theory is based on the notion that the witness can manipulate the orca. Witness, can you control the orca's actions? I'm pretty sure he can. Anyone can do it as long as they have the whistle. He has a whistle. He probably learned how to do it from his girlfriend. Huh? Well, of course not. What kind of bitch be like that? I'd be but a simple animal keeper. Lies. My memory serves. Wasn't Miss Buckler the only one who could issue commands to the orca? False. 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 Come on, Fe Phoenix. It's false. Ugh. Hmm. The judge's blade is sharper than the lawyer's. If you wish to do battle with a witness, you'll need a hone blade. Where is your sort of evidence that Mother Vimes can manipulate the Orlica? Ah! Come put in my hair! That's assault! Rhymes had to have manipulate Orla in order for his plan to work. But how can I prove it? Well, it appears his line of reasoning has become unsustainable. Objection. The heck was that? Well, it appears I was mistaken. Uh, Athena? I've analyzed the hearts of all kinds of people. I have enough experience to see when I look into your heart that you haven't given up. So that objection was my way of speaking up for your heart. Uh, thanks? She's right. Why would I become a lawyer again, only to give up? I had to keep fighting. Athena, thank you. With your help, I'll remember the old right way. The right way? Slam the desk. Your Honor, I'm not finished with presenting my argument. Hmm, do you have anything else to ask the witness? You cross-examined all the witnesses and presented all your evidence. Objection! All the witnesses? Hmm, I don't think so. I have a cross-examined the most important one. The central figure in both cases. The central figure? You can't mean. The one involved in not only the case a year ago, but the current case too. You don't mean. I never called her as a witness, but it's time to do so now. You gotta be kidding, Phoenix. Uh, who are you talking about? I demand you tell the court immediately. Who is this central figure in both cases? You've got to be kidding. Okay, so part of me wants to say the captain, but he's dead, which means the only other person could be the whale. Oh God. Take that. The defense calls is such a figure in both cases. Ola the orca. Oh dear Lord. You intend to cross-examine an orca? Custom an orca, you must be adult. It'd be impossible, says I. What are you doing, Phoenix? Silence. This absurdity is beyond the pale. How do you expect to question orca, a creature incapable of speech? Objection! Ola is intricately involved in this case. I have every right to cross-examine her. Besides, even if she can't speak, I think cross examining her will be invaluable. What is she gonna do? Tweet at us? Very well. Do what you will then. But if you fail to garner anything from this little exercise with the orca, I hope you realize the reward for your efforts will be the defendant's guilty verdict. Uh, yeah, sure. I'm ready and confident. So, cross examining Ola, huh? Well, that was a bold move, boss. Now all you have to do is figure out how Mr. Vimes manipulated Ola. That's right. Now it's Ola's turn to help us save Sasha. An orca defendant yesterday, an orca witness today, this is truly unprecedented. But even though this is highly usual, I'm prepared to allow it. Be there, Freddy the Witness Telecast. We'll have a 10 minute recess while the telecast beats it up. Oh, I thought we were at the end of the case. I guess not. All right, my friends. Well, my name is The Flightless Bird. This is your Story Biscuit channel. And this is our continued mind let's play of Ace Attorney Dual Destinies. I hope you all have a wonderful, fantastic, amazing, awesome day. And I'll see you again very soon.
It looks like I... I will say that after playing today, my theory that I said at the beginning of the episode seems to be more and more plausible. Why do we need to ask the Orca stuff, though? I mean, I would think we have enough evidence to say that Marlin did it. But there's also some evidence that we haven't done yet, such as the, the handprint on the ladder and all of that. So it's just... I don't... Uh, I know, but I don't know where it's going. Do you know what I mean? Like, I think I know what the end goal is. I just don't know how to get there yet. But only one way to find out, and that's to join us in the next episode. Until next time, my dear friends, so long and take care. Thank you for watching this video. Feel free to comment on what you saw and what you'd like to see next. I always love to hear your thoughts. But before we go, please remember that you matter and you are brilliant and you are loved and you should always be true to yourself. Never let the world tell you any different. Much love to you from your friendly, feathered, flightless bird.